And what are you dressed as today? Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel. And I'm Carol as Binary. Okay, so as the Carol Danvers Captain Marvel, correct? Correct, yeah. Okay, what do you, why? Um, well, Carol Danvers, first off, is fantastic. She's an Air Force Colonel. She's strong. She's passionate about like what she loves. Um, why we dress up her, her as Captain Marvel is because the Captain Marvel uniform is incredibly empowering and it's just fantastic to wear. Yeah, I don't have much more to add. She's just, she's relentless in her drive and her ambition. And I admire that so much. And this is, this is a uniform that I feel like I can actually wear and be confident in and feel like I can just do anything. Yeah, I was wearing uniform yesterday and it was actually that uniform I was thinking about getting into comics right as it was coming out um, and I saw a female superhero in a uniform that was not like a bathing suit a tiny bathing suit with opera gloves and I was like actually I would be proud to wear that or have my future daughters wear that as cool as hell so that was just, the uniform was actually what got me into Carol as Captain Marvel and then got me into comics really so I okay. love the uniform <laughs> Okay, great. Have you followed any of the other Captain Marvels or the track of his course of history of any of the Captain Marvels? I just, I just started going back and reading Captain Marvel Volume One, Marvel. Um, yeah, and I just read uh, Marvel Fanfare, the one where um, Carol finds out that Marvel died. I cried. I cried a real people tears. <laughs> have, yeah. Have you looked at the uh, Monica Rambeau Captain Marvel? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Knowing what you know a little bit about the history of the many different Captain Marvels, how do you feel that Carol Danvers fits into the history of the Captain Marvels? What is her role in the history? Oh my God! I mean, like, okay, Marvel is her hero, right? In a, in a way, um, she has a few different heroes, but Marvel is really one of them. Um, and she has this moment last year in, in, I think, Secret Avengers, where she's writing a letter to Tony Stark um, about the last time Marvel came back to life and he saved everyone um, who was there, who was on Hala from the Phoenix Force, right? Um, and she writes to Tony Stark that they need someone like that and how badly they need Marvel, that they need Captain Marvel. And she says, I think how we need that pure valor was the line. Um, and then in this latest, um, this latest arc of Captain Marvel, The Enemy Within, she makes a sacrifice like that. We need someone like that, we need that pure valor. Um, and then in this latest arc, The Enemy Within, that Kelly Sue DeConnick wrote, um, she makes a sacrifice like that. And it's like, it's in the beginning of this run of Captain Marvel, we see Carol taking on that mantle um, and kind of wondering whether she's up to it. I mean, she does and she takes it and there's a couple moments where it's like, no, yes, this is me, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, but this last run, this last arc is really where we see her um, stepping up to what you, you've seen earlier that she thinks Captain Marvel should be, which is awesome. I'm going to make me cry. <laughs> oh, I have an opinion about the old costumes. Oh, okay, I have, I have an opinion about the old costumes. Um, I, I don't like them. Um, the, I know the, the lightning bolt one was this redesign, and I read a commentary that was like feedback from Stan Lee um, on that costume, and it was like, this is what we need, tits and ass. And I read that, and I'm like, that's how you're treating my favorite character. That's how you're treating this character who's supposed to be the feminist icon. Um, you're not taking anything personality-wise into account. You're just taking body parts. Like, that's literally all the thought that went into. So that's it, it just comes back to the Captain Marvel uniform and how yeah. fucking cool it is. I'm sorry. I don't know if you there, can use that. How bleeping cool it is. <laughs> there was also a little uh, controversy. Some people were saying, because those comics happen to be written by men. And people were asking, how can a man write a comic book about a woman? Do you have an opinion about that? I mean, if they treat the character as a person, then it doesn't really matter if they're female or male. They're a person. There was, so it shouldn't be difficult for anyone to write. There was something Juno Diaz said a little while ago, but I don't remember the exact quote, but it was basically, if you're a guy and you're writing, you basically have to go in with the ground level of knowing you're going to suck at it at the beginning. <laughs> because you're not going to know what it is like to have lived the experiences of being a woman in this society. And it is more than possible to write a very good female character, but you have to know that you're going into it and you're going to suck. And you have to really work at it to write a good female character with depth and relatability. And I definitely think it's possible, but as we have seen, it does not always happen. Yeah. So, um, right. yeah.
Cool, excellent. And now, do I have permission to use this footage for my project, Captain Marvel Culture? Yes. Okay, excellent, <laughs> thank you.